So this is not directly related to climate, but I wanted to include it here because uh, we have left the uh, issue of how Neanderthals may have disappeared. Uh, we have let it, left it unresolved in the sense that they just breed with humans so much that they completely mixed up with the modern human or whether uh, they were somehow not as cognitively capable as uh, modern human uh, humans and they lost out in the conflicts uh, and so on right so this paper that just came out uh, argues that there is some genetic evidence that uh, humans uh, modern humans had uh, have greater neurogenesis in the frontal neocortex than Neanderthal frontal neocortex obviously is again uh, cognitive abilities complex thinking language uh, well <laughs> language is separate but still how to uh, process, store and process information, multiple pieces of information. Uh, the abstract says Neanderthal brains were similar in size to those of modern humans. We've already mentioned this several times. We sought to investigate potential differences in neurogenesis during neocortex development. So this paper takes mouses, uh, mouse and uh, stem cells, creates the so-called brain organoids and looks for uh, certain response to this gene TKL1, which is uh, the transketolase like one. Okay, so this is different in the Neanderthals versus modern humans. Um, modern human transketolase like one TKTL1 differs from Neanderthal TKTL1 by a lysine to arginine amino acid substitution. Again, we don't need to go into the details of the uh, biology itself, but using overexpression in developing mouse and ferret neocortex, knockout in fetal human neocortical tissue and genome edited cerebral organoids, uh, we found that the modern human variant HTKTL1, but not the Neanderthal variant, increases the abundance of basal radial glia but not that of intermediate progenitors. So these are two types of neuron genesis. So imagine the brain gets bigger for whatever reason. We've mentioned several reasons like walking upright, <coughs> connection to the uh, spine changing and diets, cooked food, uh, jaw muscles uh, relaxed and so on and so forth. But when the brain uh, gets, the, the cranium gets larger and the brain grows, uh, there has to be neuro new neurons being produced and then we have to figure out what uh, uh, determines that. So we'll see in a minute that BRG has a kind of an amplification, self-amplification as neurons are produced whereas uh, BIPs don't. So BRG generate more neocortical neurons than BIPs. The HDKTL1 effect uh, requires the pentose phosphate pathway and fatty, fatty acid synthesis. Inhibition of these metabolic pathways reduces BRG abundance in fetal human neocortical tissue. Our data suggests that neocortical neurogenesis in modern humans differs from that in Neanderthals. So basically, even though the brain size was uh, similar, <coughs> they had fewer neurons, neuronal connections, new neuron generations in the frontal uh, neocortex. Okay, so this is the uh, <coughs> Uh, summary uh, abstract in a graphical way. Neanderthals TKTL1 with lysine, so they have BRG as well, and you can see that the neurons are produced in ne Neanderthals at, uh, also in the frontal lobe, which is the rational thinking part. So modern humans, on the other hand, have TKTL1 with arginine. <coughs> Doesn't exactly say why this difference came about, so it may have been just an accident of mutation that allowed modern humans to have an upper hand over the Neanderthals. Uh, so here BRG is uh, increased and that leads to neurons and amplification of neurogenesis. Okay, So TKTL1 and hominin cortical neurogenesis, the single lysine to arginine substitution in modern human TKTL1 leads to greater BRG uh, numbers than in Neanderthals. These BRG in turn generate more neocortical neurons in modern humans. Because TKTL1 expression in fetal human neocortex is particularly high in the developing frontal lobe, 
These findings imply that frontal lobe of modern humans contain, uh, contains more neurons than that of Neanderthals. Does this say anything about how they may have been uh, uh, pushed to extinction? Not exactly, but at least it may still hold that modern humans would have uh, fought better if there were uh, conflicts which finally eliminated the uh, Neanderthals from the scene, right? So the conclusion of the summary of the paper is that in light of our finding that TKTL1 expression in fetal human neocortex is particularly high in the developing frontal lobe, our study implies that because of the single amino acid based activity of HTKTL1, the modern human TKTL1, uh, neocortical neurogenesis in modern humans was and is greater than it was in Neanderthals, in particular in the frontal lobe. So it just uh, adds another piece of uh, the evidence that may have sealed the fate of the uh, Neanderthals when they had to coexist with the humans. So there is always the aspect that they co-bred and we still have Neanderthal genes in us. Uh, various quantities depending on uh, various uh, levels of contributions based on where you are from, but still uh, this just adds another uh, uh, detail to the fact that Neanderthals did have lower uh, cognitive abilities compared to modern humans even though brain sizes were similar and it was related to this little difference in TKTL1 uh, in terms of uh, lysine and arginine, uh, Neanderthal versus modern human, okay?